Hi, welcome to ABTV News, where we cover the latest political and world events. Here are the headlines for this week. Russian anthrax outbreak affects dozens in northern Siberia. Kenyan man accused of chopping off wife's hands. Syrian Aleppo siege, fighting rages as Russian jets strike. India floods kill more than 150 people. Serbia and Croatia in war of words over assassin statue. 90 people are undergoing hospital checks in remote northern Russia because of an anthrax outbreak that killed a boy on Monday. Eight people are confirmed as infected with anthrax, a rare but deadly bacterial disease that is believed to have spread from reindeer. More than 2,300 reindeer have died in the outbreak in the Yamalo Nenets region of Siberia, and because of this, reindeer herding families have been moved out. A heat wave has fueled the disease and temperatures in the danger zone, now under quarantine, have soared to 35 degrees Celsius. Russia has sent troops trained for biological warfare to help deal with the emergency. The local governor spokeswoman Natalia Kolpanova told TASS news agency that about 50 children were among the 90 people in the hospital. We decided to do checks on all the reindeer herders' children, even if they may show no signs of illness, she said. The families have been evacuated to a campsite about 60 kilometers or 37 miles from the infection hotspot. Officials believe that the heated melted permafrost and exposed an infected reindeer carcass in the Siberian tundra, AFP news agency reports. The last outbreak in the region was in 1941. Anthrax is caused by bacillus anthracis and can be deadly, but usually it does not spread easily. It largely survives as spores that hide away in soil for years before entering an animal through a cut in the wound. Traditionally, the people most at risk have been those who handle dead animals, such as abattoir workers. Anthrax can be treated with antibiotics, but treatment needs to start soon after infection. A Kenyan man accused of chopping off his wife's hands and hacking her head with a machete after blaming her for their childless marriage should face the full force of the law, rights activists have said. Stephen Ngila has been arrested for allegedly attacking Jacqueline Mwende almost two weeks ago, reports say. Kenya has high levels of domestic abuse, but Mrs. Mwende's case was particularly shocking, activists added. Mr. Ngila has not yet commented. Mrs. Mwende, 27, said a drunk Mr. Ngila, 34, told her, today is your last day, before he attacked her at her parents' home in a village in a southern Machakos County, Kenyan's Daily Nation newspaper reports. A video of her with stitches on her head and stumps where her hands once were, wrapped in bandages, has also been shown by Kenyan media. The couple were living separately when Mr. Ngila allegedly attacked Mrs. Mwende, reports said. Reuters news agency quotes Kenyan women's rights group Equality Now as saying that Mr. Ngila has been charged with attempted murder, but there has been no independent confirmation of this. This is a particularly shocking case for Kenya. Even though domestic violence is rampant, Natwari Namayu of Equality Now told Reuters, we can't afford to let the perpetrators act with impunity, which has sometimes been the case in recent years, she's added. The chairwoman of Kenyan's Federation of Women Lawyers, also wise known as FIDA, Josemi Magongare said cases of violence against women have been escalating and police should ensure that all culprits are brought to book. Vita Kenyon reiterates that violence against women is unacceptable and must not be condemned in society, she said. Intense fighting has continued around the Syrian city of Aleppo, where a rebel offensive is trying to break a government siege of rebel-held areas. Over the weekend, the rebels tried to reconnect an encircled area in the east with insurgent territory in the west. They set off a huge tunnel bomb underneath army positions in the strategic Ramusei district. The army has been fighting back with the help of Russian airstrikes to stop the rebels breaking through. Around a quarter of a million civilians are living under siege in rebel-held areas since government forces cut them off last month. A rebel commander told Reuters news agency, We are now overlooking the Ramosa area, but Russian jets are intensifying their bombing, which is holding us back from moving quickly. Aleppo was once Syria's commercial capital and also boasted a rich architectural and archaeological heritage, but much of it has been destroyed or looted during more than five years of the war. Russia and Syria have announced the opening of what they called humanitarian corridors for civilians and rebels wanting to surrender, but few people are reported to have used them. 
Floods across India over the past three weeks have killed 152 people and displaced millions, officials said. Officials said 34 people had died and 1.1 million displaced in the northern eastern state of Assam alone. Efforts are also underway to rescue animals from the state's Karazinga National Park, which is one of the last habitats of the rare one-horned rhino. Wildlife officials said 80% of the park is underwater and over 100 animals, including 17 rhinos, have died. Floods have also damaged large tracts of agricultural land and infrastructure in the northern states of Bihar and Himachal Pradesh, as well as West Bengal state in the east. The PTI news agency said hundreds of people were stranded along the highways leading to Manali, a tourist resort in Himachal Pradesh. India's meteorological department has said that heavy rains are likely to continue. Serbia has demanded that Croatia remove a newly erected statue honoring a convicted assassin. The monument to Miro Barosic was unveiled on Sunday in the seaside village of Drage with two Croatian government ministers in attendance, as well as several far-right supporters, Balkan Insight reports. A Swedish court convicted Barosic of murdering Yugoslav ambassador Vladimir Rolovic in Stockholm in 1971, sentencing him to life in prison. Barisic died in 1991 while fighting in the Balkans War and is considered a hero among Croatian nationalists. At the unveiling ceremony, Croatia's culture minister Zlatko Hasanbegovic described him as a knight, a hero who sacrificed his whole life for the idea of the Croatian state, the regional N1 broadcaster reports. But Serbia's foreign ministry was incensed, calling Barisic a terrorist and accusing its neighbor of an improper, civilization-defying act, unprecedented in modern-day Europe. Serbian Prime Minister Aleksandr Vukic has called for a response from the European Union on the issue, while War Veterans Minister Aleksandr Vulin says Croatia has sunk into madness from which it is simply unable to emerge. Croatia's embassy in Belgrade, meanwhile, is refusing to accept any more diplomatic protests from Serbia. Deputy Prime Minister Bozo Petrov describes the Serbian reaction as sad, saying it shows that they have not yet reconciled themselves with the past. The consequences of the neighbor's war of words could be long-lasting, according to one Serbian analyst. This type of rhetoric really has serious consequences, Aleksandr Josimovic of the Foreign Policy Center tells anyone. It takes a lot longer to kick-start relations again and then to improve them as well, considering that Serbia and Croatia need to resolve a whole host of open bilateral issues. Barisic's 1971 Swedish imprisonment was short-lived. He was freed the following year on a demand of the Croatian far-right group, which had hijacked a Scandinavian Airlines aircraft. After a period spent in Paraguay, he was extradited back to Sweden and given a reduced prison sentence in 1980. This has been ABTV News, and these have been the headlines for this week. I'm Stefano, and continue watching American Bollywood TV.